Welcome everyone. Uh, this is the energy session for IETF 117. So please have your seat. Uh, before we begin, uh, for people in the room, uh, don't forget to uh, scan the QR code or log in to the Meet Echo because uh, this is helping us also to track, um, uh, to keep track of the attendance in the room. Okay, so please uh, don't forget to do that. We will also circulate um, a sheet of paper where you have the QR code so you don't forget to do that. Thank you. So information for participants, for the participants that are remote uh, during the session, please keep your audio and video off. Uh, and for on-site participants, as I just told you, uh, please uh, don't forget to uh, log in to Meet Echo and also um, you can um, use Meet Echo if you want to raise questions uh, before going to the, to the mic. Uh, we have a, a series of not well uh, that we want to share with the audience. So uh, we will not go through all the details of that, but please be aware that uh, there is an intellectual property not well. So the IOTF follows the IETF intellectual property rights disclosure rules, and you have details that you can find on the slides of the meeting. We have also some uh, not well for the audio and video recordings. So the IOTF uh, makes recordings of uh, the events uh, and in-person meetings. So, uh, and we take also audio, video, and photographs that uh, could be available online uh, if you, um, you need to be aware of this uh, policy. If you participate online and turn on your camera or microphone, then you consent to appear in such recordings. Uh, the last one is on the privacy and code of conduct. So um, there are a number of, uh, again, policies and codes in, um, applying into the IETF and RTF. So uh, as an Participants in uh, RETF activity, you acknowledge that written audio, video, and photographic records of the meetings are made public. Uh, your personal information will be handled in accordance with the privacy policy. And you have further details on the slide. A uh, reminder for the audience also, uh, because we are in the RETF, so goals of the RETF, the RETF conducts research. Uh, it is not a standard uh, development organization. Uh, the IETF focuses on long-term research issues related to the internal, internet, sorry, while the parallel organization, the IETF, focuses on short-term issues of engineering and standards making. Uh, so while the IETF publishes informational and experimental RFC, uh, its primary goal is to, develop, to promote the development of research collaboration, teamwork in exploring research issues related to internet protocols, application, architecture, and technology. You have a number of useful links, so uh, especially for the participants in the room, uh, materials connecting to Miteco, uh, the node sharing application, and you can get access to the video recordings after the meeting. A, a bit of information. So uh, in Embergy at uh, the IETF 17 meeting, uh, meeting, we'll have uh, a number of sessions. So we are currently in session number one uh, with a specific uh, focus put on discussing the NMRG research agenda on the topic of Network Digital Twin. The full session will be dedicated to, to this topic. Um, there will be a side meeting uh, happening tomorrow, uh, afternoon, end of the afternoon, just uh, in parallel of the beginning of the plenary. Uh, here, the focus of the side meeting is to discuss evolution of the Network Management Research Group, according also to the questions that were shared on the mailing list. Uh, this is in room continental two and three, and we also cover for remote participation. Uh, you have further information available on the uh, side meeting wiki if you want to, to know more, or you can also come to us. Uh, the goal of this side meeting is to uh, summarize uh, the re responses we got on the question, but also to get uh, additional inputs and to align the different, uh, let's say, contributions to these uh, questions uh, before the session that will happen on Thursday. So this is the second session of NMRG uh, during this week. Uh, first day, uh, same time, uh, focus on the evolution of the Network Management Research Group. So uh, Jerome will uh, present uh, the outcome of the discussion and also way forward for the group and uh, open for debate and discussion. So now, uh, just an uh, overview of the agenda for the two sessions. Uh, so session one, this session, uh, currently doing the introduction, we will have a uh, one technical presentation uh, from Sheng on data collection requirements and technologies for digital twin network. 
And then the second part of the meeting will be dedicated to uh, discuss uh, Network Digital Twin uh, from a research agenda point of view in the group. I have a few supporting slides, but then I will also uh, encourage you to, to provide your inputs and views about uh, the direction of this work, of this topic into the energy. I have also some concluding remarks. Uh, session two uh, on Thursday, um, dedicated to the energy evolution, so mainly uh, discussing summary of energy mailing list discussion and side meeting outcome, um, plus a couple of uh, technical presentation on specific topics. And so that's it for the introduction. Any, I mean, comments from the room before we enter the technical presentation for today? Okay, if not, just a reminder, don't forget for people that are in the room to connect to Miteco. This is help uh, us to, to, to keep track about participation. Uh, let me check the option. Okay, Thank, thanks, Cheng. I'm giving you the, the floor. Give me a second. I'm just uh, uploading the slides. Hello, Chair. Can I start? Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. If you can speak just slightly louder, it will be better, I think, for the room. But yes, you are free to go. Thank you. OK, let me turn it louder. Because it, is that better now? Yeah, it's good. OK, hello, Chairs uh, and uh, everyone. This is Chen Zhou. Uh, I will present the job update of data collection requirements and the technologies for digital twin network uh, on behalf of our co-authors. Next slide, please. Okay, the scope of the job uh, is to de describe the requirements and the data collection for building digital twin network system and to provide the data collection method to avoiding, uh, toward uh, building the digital twin uh, network data repository, including existing methods and uh, some innovation and new methods. Uh, the objective of this draft is to identify the data collection requirements and principles for DTN and the call for more efficient data collection methods suitable for DTN system. And also to reach a uh, consensus, uh, consensus on selecting data collection methods for various network data. Next, please. Uh, this slide shows uh, uh, a uh, brief hist history of this uh, 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 change word uh, version. So we can skip that. Next slide, please. Uh, this is current uh, table of contents of, uh, of, uh, of, of current latest version. Next, next slide, please. OK, uh, this, uh, we listed uh, in this draft, we listed the six uh, data collection requirements for building DTN digital twin network system. Uh, the first is target-driven on and on-demand collection. We know that uh, complete data is not a, a affordable to build a, a digital twin network system because of the high uh, resource consumption. So we just need to collect data towards the target to uh, build specific model for specific application. A second uh, requirement is diverse tools for various data. Uh, we know. Uh, there are various data in network uh, in different uh, collection frequency. Your time level is easy to get and uh, difficult difficulty to to get, etc. So we need to diverse to uh, for different type of data. The third is uh, a third requirement is lightweight and efficient collection. Uh, this is true. Uh, uh, method is need to uh, prove efficiency of execution. Reduce reduce the cost of computation, storage, and communication bandwidth. Uh, and the redundant data should be avoided or minimized with op optional data uh, compression and uh, application. Next slide, please. Uh, 
Uh, the first is uh, op open and standardized uh, interfaces. Uh, this is to support config. Uh, the, the interfaces is to show support uh, uh, configuration management, including uh, collection protocol, frequency, uh, period, period, etc. And the interfaces should also be uh, able to provide uh, secure and uh, reliable information exchange, uh, exchange mechanism. The, the, the fifth is uh, naming for, for catch. Uh, method should give a, a unique identifier or name to each data or knowledge item for references. And uh, then the name will be used by catch me mechanisms to store data and provide it for clients. The last requirement is uh, uh, efficient multi-destination delivery. Uh, we know that Telemetry system in defined in RFC uh, 9232 can be used uh, uh, to deliver the requested data or knowledge items to requesters, and items will be provided by the uh, close, closest catch to the destination of the data. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, this slide. Uh, List some uh, several uh, some uh, existing methods for data collection toward uh, building digital 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 twin uh, network system. Uh, uh, you can see that as um, we can see that uh, SMT, uh, Redconf, Netconf, uh, IMT, DPI, IP fix. Uh, uh, these tools can be a candidate for for DTN system and uh, a young data model and associated mechanisms. Can also help uh, can help uh, subscribe applications to request continuous and uh, customized stream of updates from a young data store, and uh, uh, a very good append uh, uh, document uh, nine two three two appendix A gives us a way on existing network telemetry techniques from the perspective of management management play control play and data play. And we can also see some new uh, uh, innovation methods uh, are being researched. Here are two, two examples uh, in uh, for uh, OPS, uh, OPSA WG dropped uh, data manifest proposes a young data mo young model uh, to store contextual information along with uh, collected data in order to keep collected data explo exploitable. IPPM uh, dropped uh, flow measurement addresses the network pro performance ma uh, management pro problems under encrypted transport protocol while proposing some hybrid measurement method based on marking base in packed headers. Next slide, next slide please. Okay, uh, 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 the, toward in build the uh, uh, DTN system, we also need to uh, find some. We also need uh, uh, to find some new uh, innovation directions. Uh, here are some examples, for, uh, including research on high performance data collection technology based on programmable, uh, pro uh, programmable circuits. Research on measurement measurement method or uh, for uh, complexity mo monitoring information such as network performance and uh, network traffic. Research on distributed and collaborative data collection te techniques for integrating and fusing data from multiple data sources. Research on, also research on assessment of federation policies or in data provisioning, uh, data provisioning. Uh, research on investigating uh, self adaptive and self-learning data collection techniques. And also research on exploring uh, machine learning and AI techniques to enhance the efficient efficiency and the accuracy of the data collection uh, processes by identifying patterns, uh, correlations, and uh, anomalies in natural data. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, in this uh, draft, we, uh, we, we uh, propose uh, a new, me new method uh, named uh, knowledge and instruction Driven data, uh, data collection for the digital twin uh, system. We know that uh, current, uh, uh, most uh, for most uh, uh, current uh, 
collection method. Uh, they collect raw data and pull data from physical uh, network. Uh, they have uh, some problems of uh, high time cost, uh, insufficient storage resources, low compu uh, computational uh, efficiency, and uh, waste of um, bandwidth resources caused by data tra transmission. And uh, so we propose the uh, efficient and lightweight data uh, 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 method uh, for uh, for efficient and lightweight uh, data collection, aggregation, and uh, cor uh, correlation. And uh, the main idea is, is based on that, uh, based on sending uh, instructions to uh, elements to the physical network to pre-process the data, uh, for example, data cleaning or uh, knowledge represent representation before uh, send them back to the uh, twin network. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, this slide shows the uh, basic uh, components and uh, mechanism of the, this uh, new method. Uh, th there are two components in twin network, twin network layer uh, named uh, MC, Instruction Management Center, and the DSC, uh, Data Storage Center in twin network. And there are also two uh, major components in physical network named uh, uh, DSE, Data Storage Center in PN, and uh, TSE, Telemetry Stream Element in uh, physical network. Uh, well, first, uh, firstly, uh, uh, IMC in PN send the instructions to the uh, physical network. Uh, uh, and uh, then physical network, uh, DSE send uh, uh, DSE that the data storage center uh, passes the instruction and uh, uh, collect the raw data and send it, then send it, set, send them to the uh, uh, TSE uh, for data co uh, collection or uh, for data aggregation, data correlation, and and then TSE uh, send that, uh, send them to the uh, twin network uh, and store them in the DSE in twin, in twin network. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, this is uh, uh, the detailed procedures for of this uh, uh, mechanism, mechanism uh, and including registration, uh, 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 subscription, and collection, and uh, synchronization. For more details, uh, please refer our, our uh, uh, job. Next, please. Okay, uh, going forward, we'll uh, call for more efficient data collection method suitable for uh, ETN system to enrich the job. And uh, we also uh, to verify the data collection method uh, in the in a demo DTN system. Uh, looking forward to more comments and suggestions. Next, please. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether I have uh, sufficient time. And uh, here, uh, here's one more thing I want to want to say about the uh, data generation and the data optimization. And uh, uh, we, we are researching on the data generation and the uh, data optimization uh, besides the data collection uh, toward the, uh, building digital team system performance modeling. Uh, the motivation is that uh, you know, uh, although we have many methods to collect data from real network, the practical data is still somehow in uh, storage or sometimes uh, unavailable, especially when the data is uh, with high privacy or high security level. So uh, we want to find methods to generate and uh, optimize data uh, leveraging uh, AI or current, uh, current uh, currently uh, gen. Uh, gen uh, generative uh, AI capabilities uh, uh, so as to lower the dependency on practical user data. Uh, we, we just posted the initial draft uh, in RMRG, uh, so welcome to join us on this work as well. That's all, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Sheng, for the presentation. Uh, we have no time for questions on the draft. Okay, we have Alex joining the queue. Uh, I give the floor to uh, Arashmid first, please. 
Oh, a general question, actually, Rashmit from Huawei Canada. Uh, how do we distinguish the, the information that we need to collect uh, uh, for digital twin uh, and distinguish that from the ones that we actually collect for AI or for any other type of data um, that we are collecting? Is there, a, I think, whatever draft that we put together should address this and actually completely distinguish what the goal of it. Maybe there is no distinction, and if there is distinction, we have to capture it at least in our definitions of the type of data that needs to be collected for digital twin. That's comment number one. Uh, the, the, the next comment is about the actual network digital twin. Um, is the goal to, to just collect uh, the information about the network or uh, literally try to actually replicate uh, the, the, the network equipment in our digital digital twin of the network. Because a digital, digital twin of the network consists of a whole bunch of nodes probably that are connecting to them. How closely those nodes basically have to follow the physical physical uh, entities in the network. That, the, 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 the closer they, they, uh, they follow the, their physical twin, uh, the more precise or our picture of the network will be. So we need to clarify that one probably as well and, and see uh, how precisely, uh, what, is, what is it that we want to do in terms of creating a digital, net, digital network or digital twin of the network. Thank you. Uh, Sheng, you can also answer if you want. And there are other people in the queue, but please take your time to answer. Uh, so can I have a, a short uh, reply on this? Uh, thank you for the question. And uh, uh, okay, thank you for uh, for your question regarding to the uh, uh, the difference the difference of uh, data collection for digital twin network and uh, data collection for other uh, AI uh, architecture or AI uh, applications. Uh, uh, this should come back to the uh, the the the, uh, the characters of digital twin system. We know that digital system is uh, not not just uh, of high fi fidelity representation of uh, physical network or real network. It is more of uh, data driven models, uh, uh, data with high uh, efficient emulation uh, and uh, multi round of pre verification and uh, interactive mapping. So with this, uh, this 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 different goals or characteristics uh, with other uh, existing architectures. The data collection uh, is is more comprehensive, and uh, uh, it, it also involves some uh, uh, more, uh, more uh, uh, real time level and uh, some uh, the other uh, new new uh, new requirements. So that's that's uh, the the difference. Uh, just a quick response. Uh, response. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next will be Alex. Yes, uh, Alex Klem, Future Way. Yeah, I have uh, one comment, but I have maybe two comments actually. Uh, so one for, for the data collection requirements themselves, it seems to be very much, these are, this is an engineering job. I'm, I'm failing a little bit to see really actually the research challenges. Um, and I think that it would be good to work this out a little bit more specifically. And on this one, basically my second comment is basically also actually to the previous comment. Um, this has also digital twin uh, network and I think it's a, a, actually one thing that I was missing actually was tying this in more with this particular problem space. Because I would think actually that there are definitely research questions in this thing, but it's not, not so much about, okay, how do I set up the collection? I mean, this is pretty much uh, engineering uh, but as far as I'm concerned. But the, the question, for instance, if you, use for, if you have, for instance, a digital twin and you use whatever predictive AI methods and so forth to see what, you, what, what this, uh, this, for instance, how can you, basically utilize that to to steer for instance your data collection to know what you need to collect to see basically whether your predictions are on, tra on, on track where they are deviating um, those sorts of things and so what this I think looking at, at more at this problem domain might unearth some actual research challenges uh, otherwise I think uh, also looking at the draft I don't find it from a research perspective research topic perspective very convincing. Uh, th thank you, Alex. Very good point. Uh, we also uh, we also considering this, this your your points internally to see whether uh, uh, some existing existing or material tools or uh, for data collection can be moved to uh, uh, engineering uh, <laughs> uh, like uh, or, or working groups. So uh, 
but we still believe that some innovative uh, direction should be started in the research groups toward the data collection for digital two network. Of uh, course, uh, you, you also mentioned some uh, AI techniques, some uh, uh, knowledge or, or contextual representation uh, uh, align with the data collection tools so that, that need to be, uh, we believe that need to be researched in uh, uh, still in search and far from, uh, at least a bit far from the engineering uh, now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. One comment also, maybe if, if I can just add one, one more thing concerning the digital twin points. What would be interesting would be, for instance, to look also since there are twins, there are two twins, for instance, to look at basically do, does the, do they reflect each other or basically how much do they deviate and so, uh, and so forth and basically using some of, uh, exploring those aspects a little bit. So I'm just, just, as, just as some ideas. Thanks. Thank okay. you. Uh, just before Thomas goes to the mic, I I mean, I really welcome the comments. I think comments are maybe to the draft. There is also the second part where we have a more general discussion. And I think the comments will well align with this other consideration. Thank you. Thomas, up to you. Thomas Graf from Swisscom. So first of all, thank you very much for the, the good work. Uh, I want to just comment on section 5.2 and 5.4 on the draft document. So in the section 5.2, you're describing a workflow which starts with 1.1 and 1.2 on the registration from the VSC to TSC. Here, I have a slightly different perspective. In my opinion, the network telemetry subscription should, act, should actually follow the service deployment in the network. So basically, if I create a new uh, service on the network, for that service, I also need to uh, define the network telemetry, what, what I actually want to monitor and, and accordingly adjust the network telemetry subscription. So therefore, I believe with the orchestration of the service, also the network telemetry subscription should be created or adjusted. <laughs> That's one point. And the second point is on the, the TEC functionality itself. Here I would advise to align a li little bit more closely to the data mesh architecture which is defining uh, basically a way how you can share data among different domains. And we didn't distinguish there between so-called source-aligned and aggregated data. The objective of source-aligned data is uh, to preserve the semantics as much as possible. So in this case, it will be the network semantics, while an aggregated, uh, that's uh, also what you described in your document, basically, caching and aggregating and compressing data over a, a period of time frame and re reducing cardinality. That's all. Oh, thank you. Thank you for, for your good points. Uh, we, will, uh, we will consider your suggestions and to see whether we can refine our, our uh, job. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, maybe a quick comment on uh, Thomas' observation is that tomorrow, if I'm correct, there will be a short presentation. Uh, I don't know if it's Diego or Ignacio, but uh, they will discuss data mesh at, at some point. So I think your, your comment will be also related to that, um, that work. Thanks. Uh, sorry, not tomorrow, Thursday. <coughs> Thanks a lot, Cheng, for, for being available and uh, giving us the presentation. Uh, of course, you can <laughs> stay connected for the, for the second part. Um, so I will now uh, take the mic. Uh, Jérôme, if you want to push this, I can push this back. No, no, it's Okay, um, is this working? Yep. So um, now we are, let's say, in the second part of the session discussion for um, uh, the agenda we have today. So this is a open discussion. So I, I will just have a, a short supporting slides to support the discussion, but I welcome your, your input to that. And I see that in the previous comments, we already have some, uh, some reflection on this, uh, this question. So discussion on network digital twin, the general goal of uh, this discussion, but it's not one-time one, one discussion, is to 
go towards defining a proper research agenda for the research group on this topic of network digital twin because it's kind of a huge domain of investigation and I think it will be valuable for the group to narrow down to know a bit more precisely uh, which uh, let's say set of works we, we aim to do uh, to provide value with, uh, with the results. So, um, but we are, I mean, not, we, we are already a kind of a baseline in the, in the research group. So we have one active research group document, which is um, concepts and reference architecture. Uh, it covers uh, concepts, basic definition and architecture uh, sketches. Uh, also uh, explore aspect that uh, how to go with digital twin beyond, uh, let's say more conventional simulator emulator approaches and also uh, have some parts about interactive virtual to real mapping of data uh, and data-driven approach to build closed-loop network automation. So it's, uh, let's say, um, a document that looks into uh, very deep various facets related to Network Digital Twin. Uh, and with, in addition to that, we have also a series of different individual drafts uh, that covers different aspects. So one, one example was a draft from, from Sheng before on data collection requirements for Digital Twin. Um, they are also draft looking into requirements for interfaces um, between the twin and different uh, applications uh, of, uh, of the usage of the twin. Um, Sheng also mentioned that there is a new draft looking into more uh, the aspect of uh, generating data to feed the twin and also the accuracy, the techniques to be able to generate so, so data that would be accurate and realistic enough to be used in a digital twin uh, environment. Um, there are also like more techniques. I will relate that more to enablers or to modeling. So you have one draft, which is on graph on using graph neural networks uh, to model uh, digital twin networks. So this is really uh, trying to understand uh, which kind of techniques could be usable uh, to represent different types of digital twin. Again, with a set of requirements in terms of uh, accuracy of the modeling, also capturing the right set of behaviors, uh, maybe also aspect of scalability and performance of the model itself. Uh, for, for the digital twin uh, and also different types of networks and usage you want to have of that. Um, and also uh, a last document um, in terms of active documents that we have right now, it's on functional uh, design aspect of performance oriented digital twin. And here the, uh, the idea if I get right from, from the draft is that they, they were starting more from an application, uh, a use case on uh, optical network, using digital twin for optical networks, optical transmissions, and then uh, reflecting on actually what are the kind of uh, common building blocks, uh, uh, design choices, um, design patterns that they uh, observe in, in, in their uh, process of building this digital twin for this application and try to say, okay, what could be in fact learned in terms of commonalities and uh, to use that maybe to feed a kind of discussion on uh, potential architectural building blocks for, uh, for digital twin in general, but here also in a kind of categorization for so-called performance oriented digital twin. So this is a, also an active work. Just to mention that there is also an expired draft, uh, which were more an analysis uh, linked to also the use of graphical neural networks, uh, which is quite also interesting to consider. So this is a kind of the current work activity that we have in the group. Um, now, uh, okay, this is, uh, I will not <laughs> discuss all these kind of uh, blocks. Uh, and, and the idea here is not to be exhaustive. It's just to highlight that, okay, we have some proposal in the group uh, and, and I think Anyone can come up with proposal in the group, but the idea is to say that if we consider the domain of network digital twin, uh, which a subset of digital twin in general, digital twin technologies, there could be various areas uh, of work. And I put research areas, but actually it can cover also maybe standardization related type of work or more engineering type uh, of work. So, but let's say we, we consider research here. So, but the idea is that to say, okay, we, we are looking into a subset of the proposal, but there could be other areas that could be relevant to uh, investigate. So uh, for instance, visualization, modeling, uh, different types of simulation or uh, enablers for simulation, aspect of life cycle of the digital twin composition, I mean, like in the sense of composability, but also if you want to compose twins together, uh, interoperation, if you have to operate twins uh, between them, they are, of course, as we have seen, a lot of questions related to data. I mean, I will call it the data layer, feeding the twin, but also representation of data and use of data uh, in, in the digital twin environment. And uh, what I put a bit on the left uh, is the uh, so-called enablers. What I put with enablers is actually maybe uh, from a research angle, what could be, I mean, what are the, the, the challenges or the roadblocks to actually make 
network digital twin technologies are widely available and then it could be types of investing mechanism, techniques. People have cited, for instance, different types of AI techniques, but also modeling and other things to try really to uh, unlock these, uh, these challenges and say, okay, what are actually some types of enablers that the research group uh, can, uh, can work on and, and, and uh, have some, some research about. So here the idea is to use it a bit as a support to uh, gather some comments uh, about uh, interest, uh, other areas of research that we, we could capture in the research group. Um, just to, I have a slide of conclusion, but I just want to show you that uh, I like also to capture some, uh, some aspect uh, after the discussion. So this will be the, just uh, the concluding remarks. But, uh, now I'm putting really the, the floor to the audience also online. Uh, to be able to capture your comments. So uh, we already had a, a first set before, but we can, of course, uh, go again over that. Hi, Rashmit from uh, Huawei Canada again. Uh, so one thing that probably uh, would help the entire research in this area would be the use cases that we, are, we need to cover here. So what, do we, like, what are we going to be using the, the NDT for? Uh, one, of the, one of the aspects that I'd like to actually use it is to actually verify AI solution for network. Uh, right now, for the solutions that, uh, like for, for problems that we have solutions, you know, we are optimized, we are using AI to optimize it better. We have a benchmark uh, to actually uh, evaluate the performance of the AI against the network. Now, there are certain things that we do not know what the AI solution is that is good or is not good. So, one aspect of using NDT would be applying the AI within the NDT to see the reaction and see how basically it performs. Uh, uh, with with those AI solutions in, in in place, so these type of use cases might actually help us to to go forward and actually build some sort of like what do we need actually in order to make this NDT a, a, a reality. Thank you. So you're talking about a kind of a sandbox environment, a digital twin in a kind of sandbox environment where you can actually run the outcome of an AI mechanism or. AI. Okay, got it. Okay. Uh, Jerome, you can manage the queue. I think Diego. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, just a couple of, uh, <clears throat> of ideas uh, connected with uh, f first, this idea of using it for, I, I would say, for validating AI in a, in a safe environment. Second, I'm, I'm, for, I'm for training. This is equally important because uh, training AI is something that uh, very often you have to expose AI to situations that are not usual, that are not, I mean, even not desirable. But just a, a clarification, you mean really the training phase or you mean like, for instance, like reinforcement learning that is more in touch with an actual network when you have to try no, no, uh, I mean, it's, it's training, it's, it's providing. I mean, when, you, when you're trying to provide uh, <clears throat> it's, it's both. I mean, it's when, when is when you're trying to provide data for training and you have to provide data that, that matches situations that are unusual or even or even totally undesirable. And, and second is about validating it in the... And uh, again, this is something that we, we have, uh, wh why we started to use things that are close to a digital twin was because we wanted to generate control data sets knowing what we were generating and that we were generating data sets that could be usable because they were not exposing anything that was relevant in terms of privacy on the one hand and even uh, mm, commercial trade trade secrets or, or, or ideas that could be in some by, by, by uh, any means the, the company would not be happy sharing with, uh, with others. This is something that uh, I believe is uh, is uh, are part of the of the of the uses that uh, are not here. And, and there is a third property, and this is something that we should uh, explore here as well, is how when defining a digital twin, or not when defining the digital twin, when define a particular configuration of the digital twin. Something that is very important in my view is that you can guarantee that the <clears throat> that the experiments are on the one hand reproducible because you can, I mean, others can, can experiment the same way. And on the other hand, that they are repeatable in the sense that you can run them with little variations because you, you might be very much interested in, in seeing this what if 
scenarios with small variations to see what happens. And this has very much to do to a way of formally describing the experiments, formally describing the topology, formally describing the images that are taking part and the different elements, and formally describing where you're measuring and what you're measuring. This is something that if we could advance in that direction would be extremely desirable. Thank you for your comment. Hello, you Mrs. from Physics Research of Europe. Uh, I agree with the first uh, comment related to AI when you speak about data, so AI is very, very relevant. My take into it, it's aligned with some, uh, what uh, Diego mentioned, it's more, what I wanted to see here is more uh, the security aspect, the, the privacy preserving aspect, because we're talking about network digital twin. I think that trust preserving, uh, tr trust and security is something would be relevant in this case, at least in this. What do you think about that? Okay, C could you clarify a bit? In which area you see that there could be, if we uh, consider can be, digital can twin be. security or privacy consideration that are a bit more specific to general consideration for those domains? One of the considerations, uh, I, I see it as one of the enablers for this because there is the network as in the network element of this uh, digital twin that you are mentioning here. Because how can we, um, how can we access securely like the information and to know uh, from like from the assets, you know? So that's one element. The second element, if we access like uh, a specific entity in the network, how can you know it's really uh, like the, pro uh, the information that we're accessing is reliable? So there are a lot of trust uh, issues that can be considered in this uh, regard. Okay. Uh, okay, maybe to your comment, but also a bit of a general um, observation uh, linking to, to what Alex was mentioning is, in what we discuss, I think at some point we should always try to qualify whether it's a general consideration, you see, because what you said, for me, it's a bit general consideration and the same apply maybe for validating AI or uh, data collection for any kind of usage. And what makes them maybe specific, either because there are specific requirements in their usage in a digital environment or that to make them available, I mean, usable in a digital environment, we add additional requirements. So they need to come maybe with augmented features or different uh, processing, I don't know, but you see, I think in our, in our um, approach, to the work we want to do, um, what makes the proposal specific to the digital twin? Because uh, as we you will see in today's first day, um, some of the comments that you, you were raising today could also be applicable to other topics that we have. For instance, we have AI uh, for, for network management. And in this discussion, there is discussion on data, data quality, uh, also privacy security consideration. So I, I'm totally in support to have this kind of, uh, let's say, uh, proposal brought to the group, but if we consider them in the context of Neto Digital Twin, I think at some point we sh should really say I, what makes them specific. I agree, I agree 100%, but the, it, uh, we also need to agree that the Neto Digital Twin, it's like very wide topic. So if we define the use cases or the application, it will be easier, I guess, to like talk about the specific. So then we are back to the first comment, which I agree. agree. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi. Harashmi again. Uh, so the other thing that might actually help, the, I, I find that the, the notions of the network digital twin is pretty wide in scope. Uh, as we know, network consists of layers. And uh, you know, the question is what, what layer of this network we're going to actually create a digital, net, digital twin for? Uh, I'm sure that we probably can do a better job at the IP level or maybe layer two layer, but as we go down to the, to the optical level, that might be, to be very, at least more difficult to actually do it at that level. Now, at some point, some of these information have to be simulated to, to, to go to the layer. So I find that the, the, the network digital twin actually, just like the network itself, is a layered approach. Um, so, and and um, uh, from, the, from the user's perspective, they need to be able to define some sort of resolution of, of, uh, of, the, of this uh, digital twin. What is it that they want to actually see in there? And even at the, at the, let's say, if I take the IP layer, um, what is the resolution at the IP layer? So this, this layered approach to, to NDTV might be actually uh, 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 try to define them as a research topic to see how we can actually approach this thing and, and define these boundaries around this to help the research in this area.
Thank, thank you for your comment. I mean, uh, just from a personal experience, every time I discuss network digital twin with my colleagues or anyone I meet, I always say, can you qualify the network in network digital twin? Are you talking about a base station, a router, or an entire, I mean, 5G core software? So I think a bit what you say, because you were talking layer, I say, okay, can we qualify the N in the NDT? That's very important. Dian? Uh, Dian Bogdanovich. So with digital twinning, with digital twins for network, there is one part where you want to do the control verification. And that is not that hard of a problem to be done because there has been those creating large configuration to verify from a control point perspective if they will work that has been done in the past. But the problem arises when you want to do anything with the data plane scaling. This is one area where the digital twinning is uh, causing uh, problems. Because you can verify functionally it will, it will be working. But if you want to see how the resource utilization of the, uh, under different loads are behaving, this is one area that is extremely expensive to be done. Mm -hmm. And there, there isn't a good way of uh, doing it. So. Would there be a way to see what problems could arise at network scale in the digital twin? What kind of new tools could we use except building a parallel network on top of a large production network in order to do that? That would be an uh, interesting way. Um, it, it would be an interesting research area because, yeah, there is, for example, radio networks, how do as we are talking more about radio networks inside the enterprise, how they would be scaling in those micro locations, what kind of problems we would run into it from the forwarding perspective, you know, that would be impacting. So we can model, again, from a control plane perspective, we can model it pretty nicely, but then you, you really find out the problems when you hit the in the production, and then you're running into a bunch of problems. And you really don't know until you hit that. So something that could help in that area, that would be useful, even having some, basically using AI models, use AI to train models on large networks and then use it for twinning, in, in, for the twinning simulations, that, that might be an, an idea, don't know. Okay, I think for just uh, reacting a bit to your to your comment is that, for instance, the work from the team of uh, Albert Cabellos on graph neural networks for using digital twin, they a bit started from this approach to say, can we have accurate enough modeling, both of the structure of the network, but also about the the traffic or the user behaviors, and even maybe some behavior of the network devices like bugs in the network in the in the router, to make it that simulating or not, but the use of the digital twin is representative enough of this kind of data plane behaviors, and you can put it into different situations. So there is a question of this uh, accuracy, if it is representative enough of the would-be behaviors. Uh, and I think this is a, a key <laughs> question for simulation, modeling, and, and different aspects. Olga, please. Uh, Olga Havel for Ray. Uh, you mentioned one uh, liaison as well inside the uh, uh, ITF or externally, and you also mentioned now the, the gentleman before mentioned layering and modeling. So I just want to say that we are doing the draft, uh, the drafting ops uh, uh, area where we are proposing the digital map modeling approach using RSCA 345 as a core topological model, layered topological model that use from layer one to the customer service that could potentially be the core uh, topological model for the future digital twin as a kind of something that can bring all the other uh, functional parts together. So that may be something that we can look on jointly to discuss, but that we would be proposing the draft to present uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I think we, I mean, we have, not yet had this connection between you, the work that you're proposing in ops area uh, on the digital map and this consideration in the network management research. But it was obviously, I think in, in even one of your slides, you mentioned that digital map is kind of a, a building blocks for a digital twin vision. 
So there could be relationship also, uh, and we welcome if you want to present your work also as a uh, one component that could be uh, in the scope. Yeah, and, and this, it can provide the, the API for the topology. So it is a kind of model and the API for the core, of course, not for all the other functional parts, just the topological layer. Alex? Yeah, so Alex Clem. Yeah, so I have a, also an add-on comment, perhaps to Dane's uh, comment oh, earlier. Uh, he was referring to a network scale. Uh, another aspect concerns a natural digital twin <laughs> is an abstraction, it, it, it is a model. Um, and so one question in my mind uh, is also how coarse, well, and ev every abstraction of course omits part of the reality. So one question is how coarse can a model be uh, and still be useful for certain purposes? And one of the aspects I see here also on your, on your slide, you put modeling, simulations, so clearly a lot of use cases go into this model-based reasoning type of direction, which is basically you known discipline and one of the uh, pitfalls, there's always that whenever you try to do model-based reasoning, you find out, well, the model is never complete or perhaps not complete enough for your purposes. And this is one of the reasons perhaps also to be skeptical actually of application of network digital twin in this area. But perhaps one thing would be to, you know, to, to be able to, to, to quantify or somehow characterize that relationship between how coarse or how abstract can your model still afford to be while still basically fulfilling its, well, its purpose for given problem space. Yeah. I fully concur with your comment. I think for me, it's also a bit uh, an intrinsic uh, definition of twin. We are talking about like really kind of unique, exact copy of the system we want to replicate. So I think for me, the, the design principle should be that we should have an as accurate as possible representation. Doesn't mean that it needs to be huge. Huh? It's just that it needs to be able to capture well the behavior of what we want to replicate. And it doesn't need to, it cannot be so generic because then it's not a twin, it's uh, something else. So they are, I mean, if we want to be consistent also with the, the use of the term, uh, it puts requirements on this accuracy. Okay, uh, I will use just the remaining uh, time to uh, go to the conclusion slide. So first, th thanks a lot to uh, uh, the comments received and uh, we will also bring that to the mailing list to, uh, let's say, collect the, the, the comments and additional feedback uh, and to aggregate them to, to build this um, research agenda proposal. Uh, I, I was just also a bit uh, thinking about um, how we can uh, organize it uh, at the research group level to, to structure and be um, moving forward. So first, um, again, we are a research group. so. Uh, we, we have valuable inputs to, to the group in terms of draft, in terms of proposals. Uh, I think we should only stick to the basics that start by formulating good research questions on this topic and also set the objectives. What do we want to demonstrate to uh, overcome uh, in terms of, uh, of the work that will be proposed? I mean, as the research group, but also individual uh, proposals. So really to differentiate the research work to be done by the group from what could be, for instance, standardization uh, work or also engineering work, which the good thing is that we are in the IETF also, so uh, could also give uh, uh, other, other directions for, for work in the working groups or other organizations. A second aspect or second step is also to, since we have a lot of, uh, it's, a, it's a wide area and we have already proposal is, I think, uh, a need to articulate the different proposition together. I don't say that we need to have one, uh, everything fitting into one, one block, but to understand if we have, for instance, data collection requirements plus data generation or modeling, how they relate to each other. And maybe there are also some relationship that could be useful to understand between the proposals. Uh, Second aspect is a bit more delicate to approach because it's setting priorities of focus. Uh, it's a research group, we're really open to, to, to any contribution, it's contribution driven. The thing is that at some point also, we need maybe to concentrate some efforts on priority topics or focused area, because if you want to generate enough, enough momentum, enough progress in, in a timely manner, on some areas, because if we try to tackle everything in parallel, I, I think maybe we will not be uh, an efficient use of the, the resources and maybe we will um, not be able to, to, to show progress uh, in a meaningful way to keep people invested into the research. Um, the third aspect is um, also that uh, beyond, let's say, the research question and the proposal is 
uh, the form of the results we aim to provide is also important at some point because there could be, of course, internet draft as a vehicle of uh, showing the, the and supporting the discussion and the progress of the work. Of course, this is a, a natural uh, medium for us. It could be also publication. We are a research group. Nothing prevents us for, for uh, supporting the research, the outcome through publication in various forms. But I think also in this area specifically, there could be implementation, proof of concepts, demo, uh, pieces of, of elements that could not only be paperwork or uh, uh, I mean uh, this kind of uh, outcome of the research, but think also a bit more pragmatic applied um, uh, demonstration of, of the work. Uh, I really encourage this, this to be considered. Uh, a fourth aspect is, um, again, for me, this is about the scoping of the, the work that the energy could, uh, could do in this area is to open and liaise with other groups, other communities, of course, inside and outside of the RTF and IETF, uh, because I think uh, it's, it's a matter for, me, for us, a research group, uh, to be able to position well what will be uh, the contribution of the research group in this uh, overall landscape, uh, and also to provide, to say, okay, this, this is what we aim to produce, because others will also do different uh, uh, research and investigate different aspects of, of Network Digital Twin. So uh, I think we should also try to announce uh, what we, we would like to propose, propose and also to benefit, uh, benefit from, but also contribute to cross-pollination. I mean, uh, there, are, there are different groups, uh, I mean, even beyond networking, per se, uh, association, alliance, etc., that are discussing digital twin technologies, which we can learn a lot from them uh, in terms of uh, architecture, modeling, uh, platforms, etc., that are available, and we can make more use of them into the network environment. Uh, and finally, this is just a, a few proposals for a step forward uh, to, I mean, to initiate and to continue uh, the work we, that the research group has started, including the existing documents that, that you saw before. So uh, to initiate the work on uh, network digital twin research challenges, I think this was also a uh, mentioned today by Alex, but also in previous side meetings, we, we insisted on this aspect of uh, documenting uh, research challenges, even if it's in a working document, it doesn't need to be a, a finalized one. Uh, concentrate also on design guidelines and architecture. Use cases was mentioned several times. I also believe this could be very important to uh, highlight specific use and, and can give us very, um, uh, start to provide answers what design choices we need to have and requirements. Enabler, so this is a wide uh, spectrum. There could be a lot of things proposed to, in terms of techniques to, to make the network, network digital twin technologies uh, working. And also uh, some reflection about standards implication because in, in our work we see today that there, I think there are proposals that could really be uh, endorsed by a working group more than the research group. So, but maybe the way to do today is to say, okay, we, we, we got this work into the research group, but we say, okay, what are actually the standards implication uh, to, to other groups to, to try to, to help also on this, on this aspect. So uh, that's it uh, in terms of uh, overall uh, conclusion of this uh, discussion. Uh, I don't know if we have time for any, any final remarks, feedback on this, uh, uh, let's say, proposal for the research agenda. Of course, as I said, this will be, um, let's say, uh, brought also to the mailing list. And with Jerome, we will try to animate uh, that this is become um, a, a more, uh, let's say, concrete definition with text, milestones, uh, something uh, organizing a bit this, this approach. Sorry. Excellent, we finished on time. <laughs> We're on time, yes. So thank you all again, and uh, we hope to see you to the next uh, session we organize uh, tomorrow, same meeting, and after tomorrow, the second session. Thank you.